Hello folks. Well today looked like a perfect day to take a tour of the Okoboji Classic Car Museum at Lake Okoboji, Iowa. So we took a short minute drive and here we are. So let's see what it's all about. Here we go. What's your name? My name is Lance. Lance? Welcome and to Okoboji Classic Cars. Well, thank you. What do you do here now? A lot of people, well, I have a multiple variety of jobs. Uh, I help run the front desk, buy all the merchandise for our gift shop. I didn't mention to you when you came in with your tour pass and you get done, you're welcome to take $10 off of any one of our items. Great. And so uh, That's good try to help spread the word of Okoboji Classic Cars. So what's the scoop on the airplane? The planes. There was a gentleman in California that had built these, flew a number of them. Uh, the jet actually flies, and uh, he Phantom. developed arthritis quite badly and severely. And he put his planes all up on the market. Well, the owner of the property is Toby Shine. He saw that and uh, has always been impressed, but he actually, he mentioned to you that he had to catch a plane. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a Cessna, nine passenger, and he'll be in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona in about two hours and 20 oh. minutes. <laughs> Very cool. So, uh, because it's part of transportation, Toby brought the planes in, and we thought, what better place to hang them on the ceiling? Perfect. Dave, this is Maggie. She is a treat to have here on our property. She joined us after graduating college, and uh, she knows the building extremely well. And she'll explain to you that every cup, every dish, every item in our entire showroom, she has touched this spring. We've wow. dusted and cleaned every <laughs> every item in the building. How about we make every oil can, every nut, every bolt, every glass, every wine cup. It's all been dusted <laughs> oh, and reorganized well. and reset up. So she knows it very well. All right, good and job. I've so. not mentioned Jack Reese. All at right, all. perfect. So if you'd like, I'm going to turn these folks over to Absolutely. you. Absolutely wonderful. All Thank right. you. All right, well let's go. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Jack Reese uh, is a native of Spirit Lake, actually graduated from Spirit Lake High School, and he's actually an electrician by trade, traveled the country doing a lot of electric projects and things like that, uh, but he retired uh, and then took up a hobby, uh, artwork, um, a self-taught artist, no formal art training, and he actually has painted a 28,000 square foot mural that we're going to walk through today. Whoa. Uh, it actually took over two years to paint, two years and four months. Uh, there's 400 gallons of paint used and about 15 different sizes of brushes, none of which are bigger than four inches wide. So it's an exceedingly detailed mural, top to bottom, um, done by Jack. Uh, and the icing on the cake is that it's all 1960s themed. Um, for a lot of local folks, it's going to look very familiar. It's 1960s downtown Spencer Nods Park. Um, but if you're not from around here, it works out just as well. It's a gorgeous, you know, homey, nostalgic small town America on date night. The sun's just starting to go down, the lights turning, um, neon's coming on, and all the cars speckled around the parking lot. Um, it just feels like home, no matter where you're from. Uh, and it truly brings all our cars back to where they belong, back in the 60s where they, you know, were... That was a big thing then. It absolutely was, and you get to walk through over 100 years worth of cars, actually, uh, as we go back there. So it's pretty exciting, I think we're going right. to go check go. out back there. Check it out. I will punch those little white cards. Oh, nice. So, well, Gee. it's a very big shift from where we were up front. Uh, of course, a lot going on. So, typically, what I do is kind of break down what you're seeing around here because it is a lot to take in. So, this is Spencer in the 60s. We have a slightly condensed version of Grand Avenue, downtown Spencer. But every shop you see was a shop in center and all the artwork around you, uh, the big scenes inside the shops, all that was done by Jack Reese. Uh, the only thing that he didn't paint with his hand are the signs that are right above the store. We actually had a really cool guy named Marty come all the way from Pennsylvania and he custom did those signs to be just like the sun part of the town. Uh, that was adjustable off on the outside. Also, can somebody be still inside the car? Um, but somebody can still have a reflective So H&M uh, is one of the few businesses you see displayed in our museum that is still running in Spencer today. Uh, they painted the bricks white and that's about it. They still have their cars displayed in the glass windows today. It's one of the first shops you see in Spencer as you come down Grand Avenue. 
and the other six shops you see still running, uh, HN in its original spot, Asher's dealership across the street is still running as well, no longer in its two-story uh, business, which is kind of a shame. It's moved up town to the center. Um, if you look up the street a little bit, Carol's Bakery, still running its an original spot. Its cinnamon rolls and donuts are fantastic on Saturday morning. <laughs> um, you also have Stephen Furniture a few doors up. They've now got across the street. They are still in business. The very first bank you see, uh, Farmer's Bank with those big pillars there, um, now in a new facility, but also running. Uh, as well as Hanson's, this little tailor shop just above the hotel here, that is still in the original spot as well. The hotel still is there as a community center no longer and again, a beautiful shot of the sunset as well. Jack uses tons of different colors. It really goes through the sunset. Because they have my favorite. Not going to get away yet. Yes. Uh, but they actually have a pretty big opportunity to make a family business and raise a family in a small town right on a railroad. Uh, so they went into first, as you see listed on the building, they went into uh, hides and furs, then went into wools, which you actually see a wool truck on this side dispenser um, here being stuffed and sent off. And then finally went into scrap metal where they've been over 30 years, I think now since his daughters are in scrap, now four generations in the scrap metal business. What's up, dude? Yeah, they're very realistic, a little bit creepy. I've been here in a few months working with them. I'm kind of all right with them, but I'm still not a huge fan. Oh, and an added bonus, we're all at Dell's Mobile, of course. Uh, with our gas attendants and our, our lights and all that, and even full working service. <laughs> yes. So, seen in this part of the mural, we see um, one of the very first cranes the Shine family ever used to load scrap metal um, onto the railways. It's a big part of their business. Uh, you also get to see one of many different signatures that Jack has hidden throughout the museum uh, and his artwork. Almost every shop has one, and then almost every wall has one or two. Here is one here in beautiful display. But my favorite part of this wall is, you know, despite the beautiful crane and the signature, is this little character right here. We'll see if you recognize him. Uh, the like ears are usually a pretty big giveaway. Mr. Spock. <laughs> yep, and he's actually holding the Enterprise there. Uh, <laughs> still it. being a pretty big fan of Star Trek, and we have lots of 60s references here, a little pop culture for you. That's so, great. Uh, <laughs> great. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get a little light. It is pretty dark yeah. back here. That is the one. Well, Complaint is it's hard to take pictures back in our drive-in. But it has to be dark. It's a full moon summer night back here with the drive-in with Dave. <laughs> a double feature of American Graffiti and Goldfinger. So some fantastic films, fantastic James Bond. Oh, well, there's, Studi there's a Studebaker Lark right there. Yes, there is. Next to one of my favorites, that yellow 56. My uh, friend in high school had one of those. I think it had 389 in it. It was really fast for a box. This is beautiful.
We actually had two of these, uh, 1957 this one and 1958 in Powell, the very first. It works both this color and it was awesome to see them. Unfortunately, it has, has departed um, and sold. But. So loud it actually makes the building shake. I believe it. Featuring an alcohol burning Stroker V8, uh, 512 cubic inch. It's just barely street legal. You see, there's a roll cage in there, um, but you can take it on the road. But you get noticed for sure. Um, you think? Also <laughs> noticing the gorgeous high metallic color actually comes from a Dodge Viper. It's called Striker Green. Yeah, it's pretty. That's great. Nightmares of getting stuck in there, not being able to get out of the, the maze thing. Here, the rotating bar it was on a whole turntable uh, and 16 minute rotation all the way around. I've heard all kinds of stories of people losing drinks and dates uh, <laughs> on that turntable. Uh, featured in the artwork here, we have in the blue shirt on one end, Toby, yep, with a you. variety of his friends and family. And as you come to the other end of the bar in the green blouse, we have Sylvia, his wife, as well as Eva, uh, their daughter, in the black. We sit here long enough, as Merilda may tell us a thing or two. Uh, she is on a timer and she drives me crazy. Uh, but she does get full fortunes as well. Many people were afraid of being in, at the park at night because of the bar scene and the drinking. Uh, Muriel, the original owner of the bar that turned it into a lounge, was a woman from New York, a Zinkfield Follies entertainer, dancer, singer, on her third husband when she purchased the bar. And she was known to have a string of brothels and gambling rings upstairs. <laughs> uh, she was actually running out of town eventually, and various owners picked it up before Kanye was torn down. Uh, our Peacock features some of Toby's favorite things as a full function bar, and we do cater nine events uh, lots of class reunions, family reunions, uh, car club meetings, uh, fundraisers, things of that nature. And I do want to take you around the corner and show you the the dynamometer. Oh, you got a dynamometer? Yeah. Yeah, this is nice. Good, good setup. They didn't care what color it was as long as it was pink. <laughs> uh, so we sent them uh, a bunch of samples, and this is Playboy pink, and this is the color they chose. I thought I recognized that. It'll uh, have a, a two-tone uh, off-white and white front box. A thousand horsepower. It's actually rated at 1,200, but we have a, a self-imposed limit of 1,000. So if you think a car is over a thousand, we won't even look it up. <laughs> we don't use it enough. We need to use it more. Well, it's nice to have for sure. I'm sure. We charge uh, $125 for three poles, and if you need us to do any mechanic work in between the poles, it reverts back to our $75 an hour labor. The far end is our upholstery shop. It's 60 wide by 370 long. It's a huge. And uh, Toby and Sylvia Shine are the owners here. This is for the pink Cadillac. 
Mm -hmm. These are door panels for that pink cut rack.
Well, folks, my final thoughts are this. First off, the atmosphere and the way these folks treat you make you feel really welcome for sure. Lance did an amazing job of explaining the profile and goals of the museum. Maggie was the most knowledgeable and could answer any question instantly. She knew histories and cars like nobody's business. I wonder how she learned all that. Very impressive. Well, Dennis, the GM, was wonderful too with his behind-the-scenes tour, and the entire crew were really very professional. I also got to meet Toby Shine for a few moments, and also he seemed like a real down-to-earth person. Well, Toby Shine is the owner, and his last name is close to me, as we Marines love shiny things. And most of you know my history in the Polish business, which Adam has taken to a new level. I mean, I even registered the word shine it on. <laughs> and the artwork and murals, all done by Jack Rees, are just astounding. I mean, wow. My hat is off to him and his amazing talent and perspective. This is really a wonderful place to visit, and I am so glad we went, which was my wife's idea, by the way, and a Valentine's Day present, so thank you, Ilea. I learned a lot and was really taken back to my time in the 60s. Now I wish I had a car to have them restored for me. So thanks a lot for watching, folks, and if you need any info, don't hesitate to call the museum at 712-332-8029 and tell them Nightflyer Dave sent you.